Hey everyone, welcome to the home of Martha Mitchell. And we are actually going to take a tour here in Pine Bluff of the Martha Mitchell home. And I have a special guest that is actually going to take us on this tour. So, we turn around so you can see the house. This is a very historical home. We're going to actually go inside this house. This is a beautiful house. So, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. How are you? I am wonderful. Tell yeah. everybody your name. Jennifer Medeiros. Okay. And tell us about the home. Well, the home is the historical childhood home of Martha Mitchell. She grew up here before she went to Washington, D.C. And... It's, it was built in 1887 by her grandfather. They were the only owners. Um, Mr. Bob Mitchell bought it okay. from her in 1975, a year before she died. And it's been 40 years. Really? 40, 42 years mm -hmm. since, since he bought it and he preserved everything about Martha Mitchell. We have tons of artifacts if you will, of Mark, Martha Mitchell and the Watergate scandal. Okay. And I decided to buy it from him because it's such an interesting property. Okay, let's go in if you want to. And sure. and so we can see everything. Because this is, very, I mean, this is very nice. Thank you. This is nice, very nice. So yes. let's. A main reason I purchased it mm -hmm. is to restore it. Okay. I was looking for a historical registry home, mm -hmm. and I ran across this one. It was nice. I I thought it was beautiful, light blue. That's my favorite color. Okay. And Mar when I called Mr. Bob, he told me about Martha Mitchell. I had no idea about Martha Mitchell. So I researched her. I found out she was a very strong lady in very. history. And so I jumped on the chance to purchase this home and I will be restoring it. And that's gonna be a project for me. I was looking for a project. So I see a lot of stuff that's original in here. I mean, even with the stair stairwell. Most everything is original. Interesting. Wow. Yes. Okay. Let's... In fact, this picture uh -huh. was painted by a commissioned artist who also painted Richard Nixon's inauguration portrait. Really? Yes. And look at the phone. Yes. We know Martha Mitchell was, was always on the phone, so that's why we have it here. Okay, let's go in and talk to Mr. Bob. Sure. Yes. How you doing, Mr. Bob? Everything's going smooth today. I hear you, I hear you. Tell me a little bit about this house. Well, Just a, you know, it's, it, I would think it's the most historical house in Pine Bluff. Okay. In fact, I mean, it could probably measure up with most any house in Arkansas. Excuse me, here come a train. Choo choo. <laughs> you can hear. I know, right? Uh, you know, so, uh, Martha Mitchell in the early 70s, Gallup poll made a survey, and 76% of the people in America knew who she was. Right. Now, that's, that's what you call Papa, and, and we never had that before. And she was from Pine Bluff, born and raised in this old house. She went to high school here in Pine Bluff and even come back to live here and worked at the Arsenal in the early 40s. Really? And when the when the commanding officer at the Pine Bluff Arsenal was transferred to, to the Pentagon, 
she went with him because she was the private secretary. And that's how she got up to the east. And the old house is uh, got a lot of work needs to be done on it, but the new owner understands that. And, and it's uh, what we would say a work in progress. A work in progress. A work in progress. And, I, and I'll assure you that if you re restored it, by the time you got through with one part of it, you'd have to start over the other. Because I know this is a 150 year old house. So you actually bought the house from Martha? Martha Mitchell, right. I okay. Okay, you're the original owner. In fact, but it got the deed with her signature on it. Really? Yes. I'm, uh, okay. You know, it's real, it's real strange that the way that come about. The old house was full of furniture. It was here, you know, no one living in it when I built my place across the street. But but the grass had grown up, the old bushes had grown up around it, and one one July afternoon I was out on the sidewalk visiting with somebody about five thirty in the evening and about five or six little kids come running out of the backyard in the bushes. Mm -hmm. And we knew they shouldn't have been there. Mm -hmm. So we thought we'd go look to see what they were up to. And they had broken into the house and just kind of scattered things everywhere. So I thought, gee, this thing could catch on fire and cause a lot of problems. At that time, there was houses all there were houses all over this place. At mm -hmm. that time. And so I knew Mr. E. W. Brockman, a lawyer in town, knew Miss Mitchell because she had been to town at the time of love. Before. Okay. Listed the people that she visited and all that. I think maybe he was a classmate in schools, and I knew him. And I called and asked him directly if he would sell the old house. And he said, Well, I don't know. I'll call and see. So he calls her on the phone and gets back with me that afternoon and says, Yeah, Bob, they, they'd be interested in setting up and get a, you know, a good offer. And so uh, I thought about it for maybe 30, 40 minutes and made it walked around, looked, the old house was solid. Mm -hmm. Right. That was out of the question. But I thought, well, you know, I could rent it in a big house like this. So I just ended up buying it. And, and they accepted. So so I went off to California on vacation for three weeks and left the money at the office to pay for it. Thinking, by the time I get back, you know, the paperwork be all there. But that didn't happen. This was in, this was in July. In 1975, and I only got the paperwork just, just within the framework of her her dying. Just the, I think she signed it maybe two weeks before she passed away. Really? Uh -huh. So I want to ask you. I want to ask you a question. Uh -huh. You can answer if you do, you can answer if you want to. Uh -huh. If you don't have to, I know back in we say 1975. Uh -huh. Okay, at that time, uh -huh. what would a house like this go for? Time you could buy houses like this for thirty-five, forty thousand dollars, and that was a lot of money. But uh, this was, you know, an old house, and nobody mm -hmm. wanted a big old house at that time. You know, everybody, everybody was living over in the Belmont Broad floor. Mm -hmm. you know, that's where all the new houses were, and the houses over there were set up for thirty-five, forty-five, fair sales, maybe fifty thousand dollar house. You know, so we're talking about you know twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars. Okay. And, and, you know, that's. That's a lot of money back then. You could buy a car, buy a car for for three thousand dollars. Okay. So that gives you a comparison. So I want to take a little walk around. And I know y'all, both of y'all know history about this house, okay. and especially you know a lot of history about it. Okay. And maybe you can tell me a couple of things about uh -huh. uh, some of the things in each one of these rooms. Uh, uh, let, let me let me say uh, there's some items here that we got back. From New York, <clears throat> from that Miss Mitchell had in her storage mm -hmm. that she had moved out of the house that she thought enough about that she wanted to keep it, and I'll, I'll show you that and point it out to you when we go through here. Okay. Uh, I might mention this to you if you'll shoot this couch over here. Okay. You know, it you can tell it's a time period, and it, and it, when we clean this place up, it looked good. 
and I had a visitor come in, and he was rather heavy, and he sits down on the end of the couch there, and the leg pops off of it. Oh. It breaks in two. It breaks in two. Really? And I'll just give you some heads up. That's why when you go in a museum, they don't want you touching stuff. And they don't want you sitting around on stuff. That is true. It's not that they're mean and tough and don't want you to enjoy it. But it's just, if you don't take care of it, it will be gone forever. That is true. And that's just the way it is. You know, Martha was... Martha was on the front cover of all the major magazines. Okay. I'm talking about major. Okay. We're talking about Life, Time, those mm -hmm. guys. Mm -hmm. New York, New York Times newspaper. Okay. Was writing articles about her all the time. She in her in her file that I left here have newspapers from New York where they were editorials. Okay. Where they were talking about. And I'm, you know, it's not that I was just connected with it, but she was a real popular lady that Pine Bluff just didn't seem to understand. But I didn't really myself. I watch her on the news mm -hmm. when it was going on, when she was, every time she walked out the door, the people would stick a microphone in front of her. Mm -hmm. She would she she would accept and she laughed about it and talk about it. Uh, and, the, and the administration enjoyed that because they wanted her to be like that right. until she got to, got to knowing a little bit more stuff about the war in mm -hmm. Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And her son was in the, in, in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And she understood that they wasn't doing what they said, what they were telling the public they were doing. She knew that. Right. And so when she kind of turned on them, then they turned on her. And you yourself probably thought she was crazy and stayed drunk all the time. <laughs> because that's what the press put out. That's what the press put out. I hate to say that. Right. But in the last few in the last few years we understand more that just because it was in the paper no because mean. somebody said so doesn't really make it truthful. That's true. So okay. we have letters from her. I just wanted to say this. Okay. From her to her son in Vietnam. Okay. Yes. Sign mom. Oh, man. Right. And it come from the White House. <laughs> and it got in, in on stationery. Really? Uh-huh. And another thing that she's got that nobody else in the world has got, she's got pictures of Martha Mitchell when she, when her little, little boy was mm -hmm. just a little, like a two or three year old walking. Mm-hmm. She's got pictures of Martha Mitchell when she was like 25 years old in a bathing suit. Nobody else in the world. Really, have that. Nobody right. but her family has seen them. Really? And whether she makes it public or not, I think it would be interesting to have to, for people to be able to see them. Uh, it's amazing. I think it's, I think I'll go back and not sell this thing to you. It's more interesting than I thought. <laughs> actually friends with her son. Okay. Yes. So um, I just wanted to point out in here another interesting artifact. Okay. She played this piano. Okay. A lot of people don't know that she was musically inclined, uh, but she was. And so this is my favorite piece in the house. So this is a, an original? Yes. Okay. Okay. This is... This is a little bit far off, but I'm gonna mention it to you. Uh, and you're away, you, you, you won't believe this. This radio will play. It'll play, it won't be good, it's plugged up or not. Probably, it ain't even plugged up, but it will play. But here's, here's the, the thing that's interesting to me. Radio. Now this, we're talking about, this is the 1930s, or, or early 40s, mm -hmm. radio. But who in this world, there's not a youngster in this world, and I know you two would ever believe this, but you would take your old radio to the store and trade it in and get a, an allowance. Look here. Look here. What does this say? $25 trade-in. $25 trade-in. Isn't that something? It does. For, who would believe that you could trade a radio in? For $25. And the whole thing, this whole big thing was only $69 or something. Golly. That's interesting. Now, to me, it's very, very interesting. Uh, 
This little deal over here was, this was, Oops. was at the Simmons Bank when she come to town. Which one? This little, okay. little picture, picture here. That's the marquee up there at the Simmons Bank. Okay. Now, this photo here, big time photographer in New York. He made it his, he made it his uh, specialty that he would get celebrities and, and uh, well-known people, mostly women folks. Mm -hmm. And he would go and get them up in the morning, like four o'clock in the morning. Okay. Just like they're getting out of bed and not anything on, but you know, just their clothes on. And they, he would take them to his studio and he would make them up himself. Okay. The way he wanted them to look. And that's how Martha would look right there. Okay. She, there's a lot of difference between that picture and the one on Life Magazine. It's, it's, it's just unbelievable. Very unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Now, uh, this right here, this is this is very very interesting. Here, do you look at the wallpaper and you can see it's it's in bad shape. Okay. But I do believe, and I think Jennifer believes this too, that it's more history wise valuable leaving it like this because she picked it out and had this wallpaper put here for her first wedding reception. Interesting. We had pictures. We, we got pictures of her. We got pictures of her. At the wedding reception. Her, right at this table here, her and her first husband, when she had her wedding here. Now, she didn't have the wedding here. She had her wedding at the Presbyterian Church, but this is where we had the wedding reception. Now, the chandelier come from, uh, come from New York. This end is there. And okay. we got it back. We got it back here, and all we had to do is pay for the pay for the shipping on it. And at that time, it really wasn't very much. It didn't, you know, it come in on North America. This, this, this dining, all this dining furniture stuff. Uh huh. She thought enough of it to keep, you know, to keep it. She wanted to keep it up there, but it didn't work out that way. I guess when she moved to Washington D.C. Yes, this is the only room in the house that I will leave as is. Okay. I will be restoring it, but I think the wallpaper and it has the value, items right. are very historical. I agree with you. I totally agree with you. You want to show him the, the glassware stuff over there? Yes, these it's are not original. High dollar. It's, it's not high dollar, but it's a, it's a, it's a collection that people would collect back in those days when they went to the store they would get a coupon and they could turn it in and get get dishes we also have original silverware those are original and one more thing i'd like okay. to show you in here okay that i find super interesting this kind of stuff is all over the house. Old newspaper articles about Watergate and I mean different different news news clippings from that time period. And what is the date? What is the date on it? Do you see it? Let's see. It should be at the top. I'm a commercial. What's right there? April. I can't see it. I can't either. <laughs> I need my glasses. Oh. This is December 85 here. That's 84? Yes. Okay. 1984. You know, I'm not really sure why I saved this stuff. Uh, but one thing that could be very, very interesting is just the fact that you could look to see what soda pop stuff like that would cost. You know what? You're sure right. You know, uh, it may not be worth anything today. But down the road, you can laugh and talk about So a Pepsi was a dollar nine back then. Instant coffee for the big through. Bottle. Yeah, for the big bottle. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Well, you know, it's going to be a full time job going through this. This is just some of the stuff. That, I'll bet you find something that pertained to Martha Mitchell in there, though. That's for sure. It's, it's just got to be. That's all it is.
Have you looked through all this stuff? Mr. Bob, can you tell us who's in this picture? Mm. <laughs> Was it in the house? I can't tell you, but this is old Crest store downtown. I ain't looked at it in years, so I had to. I, it, chances, chances are that those people are way older than I am. But I'm sure you know it was just a pile of stuff around here. Interesting. Somebody made a drawing there, and that's a line drawing. Interesting. So we go into the kitchen. It's okay. original. Okay. Original the kitchen is original. Original stove. Wow. We use it. We use really? the stove, yes. Look at the stove. And this is original. We brought in a few things in here. Wow. We have antiques in this cabinet. Look at the drinks. You ever heard of the grape in it? Oh. The grape in Yeah, I heard of the grape in well, look here. Look right here. This thing right here. You know, it was made at Camden, Arkansas. That's where the world headquarters. Mm hmm Now, that's a little drink. Don't have much sodium. You know, what is it, about a four ounce? Mm-hmm. Well, women folks usually bought that back in the 40s and 50s. Really? Uh-huh. And the grape pit was the most popular, and they sold them all over the style. And then they come out with a lemonette and an orange yet. Oh, but it is. all all it came with. And the, and then it went out of business and Walmart ended up with with control of the patent of the syrup. Mm -hmm. And they sold it in in South America for years and I'm thinking it's back now. And you know and they're doing it here. Do you remember <clears throat> now, why would I ask some youngster, do they remember the Watkin man? I don't. Well, the walking man was a was a small peddler, mm -hmm. and they would go around and knock on the door, and they had a little bag, something a little bit larger than the doctor used to carry around, mm -hmm. and he'd have all of his little little lotions and stuff in it. And one of the first thing they would do would be to get would get the little bottle of uh, vanilla flavoring out. Mm -hmm. And they let you smell of it. <laughs> and the reason they let you smell of it, I never knew that, but it, it changes things and changes your thought and makes you want to buy something. Oh. Now, it's the same principle. It's the same principle if you went to... Uh, this is crazy. If you went to the carnival or the fair and they cook a hamburger, got a lot of onions yes, piled on top of it. Yes, yes. What does that do? <laughs> it makes you want to buy. It makes you want to eat. Yeah, right. it makes you want to buy. Uh, wow. Here's something else too that, that was in this old house. Look here, the Watkin man. Now. That's a salve that they sold. Chlorine salve was big back when I was a young fella, and it, and it was it was a big thing here because of all this junk laying around the house. That was a big time aspirin in this part of the country. St. Joseph aspirin. It was made over at Memphis, Tennessee. Twelve cents. And it was a big deal. And then it went. It was bought out by a drug company called Plow, P-L-O-U-G-H. And then they discontinued the St. Joseph for a long, long time. But I think they brought it back. Okay. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff in here that, hmm, this is something right here. You, you, ever, you ever have a flat on your bicycle? Yes. Had a tube in it? Mm-hmm. Okay. This was a big deal that they sold back in those days for automobiles, too. It's got a little roughed place on the top of it here. See, this is like sandpaper? Mm hmm Yep. See there? Now that's, yes. you go inside, you go inside and they had, they had a little kit in here. And it, it doesn't got hard because it's got to be 75, 100 years old. Mm -hmm. But you had a little tube of glue and a little glue of patching. And you could patch your tube. It was kind of a long square like that. You mm -hmm. take your scissors and cut out what parts you need. <laughs> But they've done automobiles like that too. And they have put that stuff on. Okay. I believe that, that's a little interesting. Go ahead. That's one. You can oh. see that. That's oh, right here. That's a refrigerator. 
This yes. is the refrigerator? Yes. Uh, I was telling Jennifer, it, it's not possible to get the cable in there. Yeah. Yeah. It was still making, it was still freezing. Really? Yeah, and it's made out of cast iron. I mean, that thing is some, that thing is some metal. It's, it's really, it's really heavy. This is the freezing unit, the compressor and everything right here. So the compressor was at the top? Oh, yeah. Uh, that was, that was the way it was made back in those days. I do use the kitchen. Do you? Yes, I do. <laughs> so you're cooking. Yeah. Lived in this room, and uh, that's that's where they stayed and, until they passed away. Uh, you can just see that it's just an old bedroom. Uh, I can tell you, there's something over here that we always had fun, had, had a lot of laughs about. Mm -hmm. you, you ready for that? I am. Look here at the magazines over there. They say there's Martha there, Martha there, and Martha on Time magazine over here. Oh, this right, this right here. You know. I know what that is. You have any idea what that is? My grandma is? had one of those. It's got a lid around here. I know there's a lid. For yes. It. But anyway, <coughs> that sat close to the bed. That was the nighttime party. Oh, really? Uh-huh. And what, what I learned over the years that was so interesting, you have a tour bus come in. Mm -hmm. And you got 35 or 40 people, and they'd be from the north, or they'd be from the south, depending. Some of them, you know, grew up in the south, lived mm -hmm. in the north. But anyway, you could ask them, what is that? And you get different answers. And you could tell if they were from the south what they called it. What they... <laughs> what did they call it? Well, this far south, they called it slop jar. I heard that. I heard that term before. I heard that before. You go. You go. Right, I heard that. Because my grandma had one of those. Another thing is this, this, this piece of furniture there. Right here? Yes. Okay. Now, what would you call it? I would call that a... Mm, Chipperone. Chipperone. That's what it is? Chipperone. I'm about yeah. to say People in our curly country, that's what we call it. And she is from South Louisiana. But we call it that too. But if you were from up north, you would call it something else. And, and well, they call it a closed closet. A closed closet. A Chester drawer. Chester drawer. Uh -huh. But the shift row, French. Shift row. And the reason, it come out of New Orleans. Our people here in this part of the country got most of their furniture stuff coming from New Orleans, so we would always talk New Orleans. Uh, one of the things that's, that's interesting about this house is is the glass transom up there. Oh, at the top. You don't see those at just every house, but they would open that up and it would let the air flow through better. Mm -hmm. But there's one disadvantage too. What's that? Taxes. You paid by the openings. You paid by the doors that you had on at the house. Really? That, now, this house has got some closets, but they're not very deep. You know, we're talking about like this. You couldn't, couldn't hang clothes up and down like we hang them. Mm. You had to lay them front, you know. But but you had to pay taxes on every door. Okay. So you, you, you can see. You it's know, not it's, deep. It's, very, it's very not deep at all. Right? It's not. Oh. Uh, that's about all upstairs. I can tell you on you this. Okay, let's go. Not any, not any no. just real, real Before that I can Before we think go upstairs, of. I'm okay. going to give you a fan. We don't have air up there. Oh. So it gets kind of warm. I'm okay. Okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I can take it. He, he can take it. He <laughs> I can tell the difference, though. <laughs> cool. Hey, when you hit that second level, <laughs> right, 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 I can tell that difference, Mr. Heavy. I never, I never intended, I never 
intended to, to air condition the top? I was able to make a small apartment in the back part of the upstairs. Okay. I'll show you that. Okay. okay. Look at the floor. But, well, the floor, to me, in a 100-year-old house like this, it just looks great. Uh, Those are amazing. Those Saturday hardwood floors. Post. Here we go right here. That's all the bottom right there. That's Pine Bluffs, Martha Mitchell. So that's where they got their expressway from, Martha Mitchell uh -huh. Expressway. Look at the, don't show the ceiling. Okay. But look at the, look at the architecture there. Yes, one renovation that I'll be doing is the ceilings. I'm going to okay. put roof antique up there. It's going to be beautiful. Okay. I can tell it's going to look very nice. This wicker furniture, uh -huh. it was all sold in, in New York and was just sent it back to us. Nice. Plus, behind you, that's Martha's room. Okay, Everybody, this is... That was the, the uh, several, several of her high school classmates, well, all of her whole school, she went here, but they would come and visit and tell me different stories. But she was, she, this was her teenager room. This is her bedroom suit. We got, we got it back from D.C. And that's her really? wedding dress. Yep. That's her wedding dress, her first wedding. And... That come from one of the family members. Wow. And this is the original bid, right? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's unbelievable to have, have that much history right here. Tell us about this room, Mr. Okay. This, this room right here is where she was born. She was born in this room. I know that to be a fact was told so by the lady to come over and visit when the little thing was just a couple of weeks old. I mean, a couple of days old. Mm -hmm. And uh, she lived across the street Caterpillar over there. So this was a, you know, this is history. I'm sure a train didn't come every, every 20 minutes, but <laughs> <laughs> if the little thing did, it got used to it. Now, it was, <laughs> got used to that train. Yeah, get used to it. Not really sure any of this stuff matches. That dress was her aunt's. Really? Oh, uh, she uh, she was a pretty she was a pretty popular lady in high school around here. Yeah. Because she had you know even when the ladies were were seventy five and eighty years old, we got a documentary that. that this lady went out and interviewed all the people that were still that she could find that was mm -hmm. living and, and got them on tape. You got a copy of that, right? Was she kept in that cradle? No, I'm not really sure about that. I can't answer that. Uh, but this documentary that we got, mm -hmm. uh, you have a copy of it. Yes. And that's that's a priceless thing, too, because all the, all the people were gone then. Wow. And they spoke very highly of her. Wow. Yeah, they laughed about all the stuff that she was doing up there at the <laughs> you, you know, this is this is something I was thinking about last week. As I mentioned to you before, I saw Martha on TV a lot. Mm -hmm. I was busy. I was young, trying to make a living, trying to grow my business, so I didn't catch everything. Didn't listen to the radio, you know, during the day. Just go watch the evening news and read the paper or something. But she went to England. And she didn't bow down to the queen. Really? She didn't. And there was a lot of things written and bad about her. Because she didn't, didn't, they claim she didn't show respect. And they asked her. And she says, I'm an American. We don't bow to anybody. That sounds like Martha, too. I, <laughs> that sounds just like her. <laughs> I saw that. And, and I thought, gee, I'm going to. I'm going to pay attention to her. <laughs> so I really did. I really did. That's when I really, really zeroed in and wanted to listen and see what she had to say. I thought that was so interesting. Now, some people wouldn't think so, but but we are Americans. Right. We are Americans. And if we don't, if we don't feel that way, who will? You're right. That's, That's the, right. It's so important today. <laughs> so important. Yeah. Freedom. 
freedom. Yes, that's why one reason I'm, I started a foundation mm -hmm. in her name. The scholarship is named Martha Mitchell Truth Scholarship, and the winner is going to be from someone majoring in constitutional law mm -hmm. because I feel her civil rights were violated and uh, when they tried to silence her and okay. her freedom of speech was violated and they did her dirt. <laughs> so you have a scholarship? Yes. Okay, they're going to love that. How many rooms are in here? There are six bedrooms. Golly. It's a big house. Yep. Uh, I mean, very big house. Will you tell us about this room, Mr. Abbott? Well, you know, there again, there's not a, there's not, I don't Look know at a lot this. of history here. You know, it's just a little bedroom. But Was this where her parents stayed? Do what? Her parents possibly stayed Oh, yeah, here? This, this would be where her parents lived, but, you know, I don't know any, any history about it. Uh, yes, there are uh, small bank books on here, mm -hmm. which I find interesting. Those are bank books? I am almost certain they are bank books, yes. I can't read Finish. the... Oh, it says Memphis and Fleming Bank and Trust. <laughs> Let's see that. Well, that's a little bank book. A student's handbook. A student handbook. Yes. Mm. Yeah, merchants and planners, bank and trust, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Merchants. Merchants. That's, and that's all. Interesting. Yes. Mm. So we can go in another room. Yes, we can. This was her aunt's room. The light weren't working in it. Okay. But that is one of my renovations. Okay. <laughs> you didn't get the books in, did you? No light books yet. Okay, but this this is a bed that's that's uh, routine for homes. I saw them in many, many houses. In, it's not the cheapest room, certainly not the most expensive. Mm hmm But uh it was very, very common in this part of the country. If you will wait here, I'll go let us into this room. Okay. It's locked right now. Sounds good. This, this is a little old closet. So, so would, you, is, would you say that's original? Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think. How old you say that would be? You know, it's just about, we're just about going to clean. Got the history stuff out. There's a little mirror that when you open this thing up, you know, you got the mirror there that you look out and dress and so forth again. That's the drawer that's up. That's nice. There's just a lot of, a lot of history. This is where I stay when I come. Okay. This is her grandfather's. I use it. <laughs> nice. It's got the name on it right here. Right there. Ferguson. It sure is. Her, her grandfather owned a wholesale grocery company here. Mm -hmm. And your mom probably remember when we were very young. Okay. We'd come downtown and smell like coffee. Mm -hmm. They had a coffee mill right down on Walnut Street. I never knew that. It did. Southern, Southern coffee mills. And they owned the thing later in the year. They had a big wholesale grocery company here in Pine Bluff, and also they had a branch in Lake Village. Okay. And were they wealthy? You know, that's all. That's what they, you know, what somebody would think. They probably wasn't the most wealthy people in town. But anytime somebody could build a house like this mm -hmm. in the in eighteen eighties, had to have. Money. <laughs> you think? You're right. So they had to have some money. So when I got here, this room was all white and no furniture, completely empty. 
And so I am going to be very comfortable here. Okay. <laughs> she, she says she's going to come and stay a couple of weeks and go back to Beverly Hills and stay a couple of weeks, but she'll get to the point where she likes these people so well and fine well. There's no way she's going to stay away. Right. <laughs> Population nine thousand. <laughs> she, she did say this. It make me feel good, though. She says everybody in Pine Bluff has been so nice. I know. Everyone over here is super nice. I love it. Appreciate you. I love it. Makes, makes me feel good to know that I live in a town that's that, that's the people are nice. I feel like I'm in my hometown of New Iberia, Louisiana, when I'm here. <laughs> So everyone. I'm also renovating. Uh, there are boxes in here for a kitchenette. It okay. attaches to that bedroom that I'm using. Okay. And I recently renovated the bathroom. Okay. So you up? Yeah, you definitely updated this. Yes, it was all white, plain, and simple. And I changed the floor. And. But the one the downstairs, you're going to keep original, right? Yes. Yes. This room was for uh, her nephew. Okay. And she, I have, we have a neighbor okay. down the tracks, and he used to come and play with her nephew. He came to our grand opening on September 2nd, her okay. birthday. And so we're excited about that. But just to know that I met a man who played with her nephew is, is very interesting and heartwarming that's what i'm talking about so you all you definitely need to come down to the martha mitchell house i mean there are tons and tons of things to come check out and you would definitely love it i promise you you will maddie you definitely need to come come check this out this is very nice him with his phone smartphone <laughs> <laughs> uh, and here's the history teacher right here. Hey, I fucked this. <laughs> no, you didn't. Because you definitely gave us a good tour. I'm glad my history, yes. I'm glad my history teacher wouldn't be around. <laughs> <I believe it>. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely gave us a good tour. Yes. So you want to walk down sure. again so I can sure. um, show everyone one more time? So we're going down, back downstairs. That was upstairs for the people that... Actually, it came in late. That old picture is the house. Right here? Yes, in its original form. Way back when, we don't have a date on it, but you can see it had bushes in the front, and we cleaned it up. Well, Mr. Abbott cleaned it up. So this is the front room. I want everyone to look at this, and just look at the stairs. Just look at this. And it's amazing. We have fans. Oh, you do? To go upstairs for all of our guests so they aren't so warm upstairs. So if you're ever in town or you on the road or just may want to stop and come check out the Martha Mitchell house. This house is where Martha Mitchell was actually born and raised. And her bedroom suit is upstairs. Uh, this is actually the dining area. Yes. And you can actually come check out some of the original things that's here as well in the dining area from the magazine articles from Life magazine to um, everything from Watergate. Everything dealing with Watergate that brought down President Nixon. Uh, check out the kitchen, the original stove that's here as well. And this is original. This is original. You can't get no original than this. And we are planning. And it works. We're planning to cook for small groups. Okay. On and a if, regular basis. And look at this Folgers coffee can. All this stuff is original. And that's my tea kettle for my coffee in the morning. And. I drink instant coffee. Do you? <laughs> yes. If you, you'll see, I mix modern with old. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs>
But yeah, definitely check this out. This is one of the magazines of life with Martha Mitchell. We have coffee cups and, to oh, give out if oh, you come visit. Coffee cups as well. So definitely come by and check this out. Make an appointment. Come by, check it out. Look at some of the artifacts that's in here as well. You have old stuff. I mean, old, old stuff. You know about grape? What was it? Grape ape? Grape? 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 Grape, grape it? Grape it? Check this out. That is old. One, one more thing I'd like to say, if I may. Go ahead. Our scholarship. We're taking donations. Okay. On bold.org, B O L D. Just look up Martha Mitchell Scholarship, and we are accepting donations. Our goal is $5,000 to help okay. someone go to school. I appreciate you. Yes. Definitely appreciate you. So, everyone, definitely go there and donate. It don't make a difference what it is, just donate something. Um, go donate toward the scholarship, and if you get time, you truly need to come out here to the Martha Mitchell home house and come just check out. I mean, just come see it. And I guarantee you wouldn't be disappointed. Take care. And thank you very much for joining.